serendipity. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <sighs> this is Geico, a company that spends billions of dollars in these types of commercials every single year. And the worst part is, I kind of like them. Geico produces a bunch of ads and different types of ads, reminding us that the auto insurance company can save us 15% or more on car insurance. They're all a hit. People just can't get enough of them, or at least they're not annoyed at the existence of Geico ads. In 2005, Gecko, Geico's lizard mascot, was voted America's favorite advertising icon. Geico's similar characters, the cavemen, also received national attention. They even got a reality TV show out of it, even though it was short-lived. The pigs' ads are really popular too, even as corny as they are. People like these ads, but they're expensive to make. Geico spends roughly $1.6 billion every year making these commercials. That's not chump change. You might wonder, for all that money, is it really worth it just to remind people that they can save 15% or more on car insurance? The matter of the fact is this. Geico has made advertising a pleasant experience and has enjoyed the likes of the American public, even though no one likes the insurance industry in this country. While reminding consumers that they can enjoy low prices for car insurance, Geico has been able to portray themselves as a fun, friendly, affordable, and nice company that's just not out there to take your money. They make us think of the company in a positive light, while other insurance companies suffer from the poor reputation that the insurance industry has. But Geico's efforts go beyond its advertising campaigns. The company has a much richer history than that. It started off from nothing and became a giant, then nearly lost it all, and grew again to become the second largest auto insurance company in the nation just behind State Farm by 1% in number of policyholders. So how did it all start? And if you keep on watching, you might save 15% or more on car insurance. Geico started in 1936 in Fort Worth, Texas, at the height of the Great Depression. Its original name, the Government Employees Insurance Company, sprung from the fact that Geico's founder, Leo Goodwin, wanted to insure government employees only, especially those in the military. Goodwin had worked at fellow insurance rival USAA since 1925. USAA specialized only in military personnel. With his years of experience at the company, Goodwin noticed that military personnel got into car accidents at much lower rates than other American drivers. It's here where he got his idea for GEICO from. When he founded GEICO with this mission at heart, he put up a mere $100,000 investment. A year later, he moved his company to our nation's capital to focus on the growing federal government during FDR's New Deal during the Great Depression. Geico's strategy was a success. Federal employees turned out to be, in fact, significantly less risky drivers. Geico capitalized on this. Within the next year, Geico had written 3,700 policies and hired 12 staff members. At this point, Geico was a very successful small business, but the Goodwins wanted to take their new strategy and go big with it. In 1948, they brought their friend and investment banker, Lorimer Davidson to the company to help them find new investors and grow the company. Davidson then recruited new investors to grow business. Among those new investors was the legendary Benjamin Graham, then a business professor at Columbia University. Graham has been called the father of value investing and was the author of one of the most important investing books in history, The Intelligent Investor. Graham also brought his young student, Warren Buffett, with him on board. A young Buffett traveled to Washington to get to learn more about the company and eventually made his first stock purchase. In 1951, Warren Buffett named Geico the security I like best. From 1948 to 1958, Geico's market capitalization grew almost 50 times. Starting in 1958, Geico's insurance premium revenue grew at a compound rate of 16% annually, from $40 million to $250 million over Lorimore Davidson's tenure. Buffett had made a 50% return on his Geico investment just one year after making his first buy. Geico's growth was rapid, constant, and stable, but soon after the auto insurance company reached its peak, everything fell apart. In 1970, Geico had reached its peak. It was a very successful company, the fifth biggest auto insurance company in the country, even though they were only serving a fraction of the market, the government employees. Then Davidson was replaced as the leader of Geico, and the new management wanted to take Geico to the private market. The expansion plan was drastic and risky. New leaders forgot the foundation of the auto insurer in the first place and why it had become so successful and profitable. So in 1974, under the new CEO's leadership, Geico began to insure the general public as well, charging similar rates than for government employees. This proved fatal. 
From 1973 to 1975, Geico reported a $127 million loss, the first time in the history of the company where it wasn't profitable. Geico had expanded too quickly and with too few changes in how they priced car insurance. They had also expanded their services beyond from what they were good at. Geico started to offer homeowner's insurance from 1962 to 1996 and life insurance from 1975 to 1985. The faltering morale had also taken a toll on the company. In the beginning of the 70s, the Goodwins had passed away. With Geico's many failed new ventures, its new CEO retired in 1975 after only a few years of serving the company. In 1976, the other top executives at the company resigned after Geico's share price had fallen from $61 to less than 5 bucks in just a few years. To prevent Geico from total collapse, the auto insurer had to give away a quarter of its policies and had to issue new stock, which hurt existing shareholders to pay for claims. It was here where Warren Buffett played a major role in reshaping the once thriving company. While the company was virtually in shambles, Buffett had seen its potential and thought it just needed some restructuring. The falling price of the stock was the cherry on top of the cake for the prolific investor, and he made his largest purchase in insurance stock to date, buying 1,294,308 Geico shares for himself. He then bought another $25 million in Geico, roughly $115 million in today's money, cementing his position even further. At this point, Buffett was a majority shareholder, and he began introducing many changes to the company. Geico introduced a 24-hour-a-day, 365-day-a-year telephone service for claims, sales, and service in 1980 as its emphasis on customer service deepened. Buffett recruited a new CEO, Jack Byrne, a highly regarded insurance executive, to come help fix the mess. Geico had expanded into unknown territory. It originally started to insure only high-quality drivers, such as government bureaucrats, but it expanded too quickly and too abruptly. With the help of Byrne, Geico began to roll back on these expansions, drastically. Half of the company's employees were fired. Geico exited unprofitable markets, where there were too many risky customers, and raised premiums rates, adjusting them to the growing inflation of the 70s. It discounted many of its programs, such as various types of insurance, where the company wasn't making any money. And they invested in technology, slashing the middleman in the sales process to reduce costs for the consumer and expenses for the company. These resolutions worked. Geico became profitable again just a year later. Buffett made a 150% return during that same year from Geico alone and continued to purchase the stock. In 1980, as the company recovered, he owned a third of the company. In 1995, Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway bought the remaining shares of Geico's outstanding stock, making it a subsidiary of one of the most profitable organizations in the country. The path for recovery was aided by Buffett's intervention in the company structure and financials like adjusting premiums and exiting unprofitable markets, but it was also due to Geico's heavy investment in technology and innovation. The Geico website states that Geico never sells its products through insurance brokerages or independent agencies. Geico does have a few local agents, but they are exclusive agents that are only allowed to sell insurance not offered by Geico and partner companies. Inherently, there are very few of these. Additionally, Geico has expanded its market share by reducing costs, which include not having insurance agents. Geico sells most of its policies directly to consumers, eliminating the cost of the middleman, unlike other competitors like State Farm and Allstate, which have to spend billions of dollars in salaries and physical locations. Unlike its competitors, Geico's founders, the Goodwins, sold insurance directly to consumers through phone sales. They rarely had physical locations, so since the beginning, they've had much more experience with these types of models. With the advent of the Internet and improvements in technology, Geico has reduced much of the cost of the traditional brick-and-mortar business model, which many other insurance companies use. Instead of spending money on agents, Geico can use that money in one of its most successful strategies, advertising. Advertising is critical for Geico's success, since the company doesn't offer the same storefront presence of the brick-and-mortar model employed by its competitors. The difference in ad quality is clear. Geico ads are entertaining, informative, and ultimately convincing. When Geico's Gecko made its first appearance during the 2000 television season, it quickly became an advertising icon. Two years later, Geico had passed the 5 million policyholder mark. In 2004, Geico introduced the cavemen to television audiences to drive home the point that using Geico was so easy even a caveman can do it. The same year, the company was able to re-enter the New Jersey auto market in which they had been so unprofitable before. Later that year, Geico built a new office in Buffalo, New York, 
to alleviate customer congestion and help with the rapidly growing number of consumers in the Northeast. It pushed past 6 million policyholders. By 2007, Geico's advertising icons had reached celebrity status. The cavemen were featured in new ads and on interactive website that showed off their contemporary and very hip lifestyle. They also had their own TV show for a while, even though that was a fluke and it was eventually canceled. Meanwhile, Gecko became the spokes creature for a national touring gecko exhibit at several zoos and aquariums around the country in order to promote wildlife conservation efforts. In 2008, the caveman was voted America's favorite advertising icon of the year and joined Gecko on the Advertising Week Wall of Fame. Geico was trying to portray itself as a friendly and engaging company. Most people became familiar with Geico not only because of its services, but because of its friendliness and popularity. In 2019, Geico had reached its 17 millionth policyholder, becoming the second largest auto insurance company in the nation. In short, Geico's focus on advertising was a success. Part of Geico's advertising strategy is to portray the company with a positive light, especially as the insurance industry has constantly been under attack for being overpriced, greedy, and untrustworthy to the consumer. Geico has been able to combat this by advertising, as well as with community engagement through partnerships. Geico is affiliated with many institutions, such as universities, organizations, and companies. They also offer discounts for members of these institutions. For example, if you request a quote from Geico, you'll notice that there's more than 800 organizations for which you can be a member of and receive a discount. Additionally, Geico has long been involved in motorsports sponsorships. Since 2008, Geico has sponsored the German racing team, first in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and later in the NASCAR Cup Series. In 2020, Geico became a premier partner of the Cup Series, sharing title sponsorship rights with Bush Beer, Coca-Cola, and Xfinity. Briefly put, Geico has managed to sway the public that it isn't just another greedy company trying to take your money. In 2014, Geico became the second largest insurer in the U.S., now insuring over 28 million vehicles in the U.S. The company has over $36 billion in written premiums and more than 16 million customers. The company now employs over 40,000 employees and is the largest insurer provider for ride-sharing workers such as Uber and Lyft drivers. While the auto industry was founded in 1936 to provide low-cost insurance to federal employees during the Great Depression, it has made its policies available to all drivers and become an insurance giant in the country. GEICO is a different company. It has a different business model from other insurance companies. It has been able to sway off the growing backlash towards big companies and succeeded in a highly risky market. After all, it was Warren Buffett himself who said that GEICO was his favorite investment.